The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to a special OAA Now basketball preview show here. I am Sammy Tamina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Tween Terminus on Ori Neighbor Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud, those watching on YouTube, and also those watching on Ori Neighbor Television. We got a lot to talk about, obviously, here. Um, looking at the, um, we're going to be previewing this on the local voice and also on YouTube. Um, so we're going to go with the boys first, since the boys start first, then the girls. Um, we're going to preview all all 24 teams coming into the year. What is their expectations? And obviously, what is their postseason aspirations? Obviously, when you look at the postseason. So without further ado, obviously, let's look at our um, first division. Of course, the boys' divisions are contrasted of, th- of three divisions this year. When you look at, of course, the divisions, um, we're going to go blue first, then white, and then the red. Um we're going to preview each team here. We do have interviews from Media Day from from certain coaches, obviously. So we're going to talk about what their expectations are heading into the season. So when you look at, of course, the division, I mean, when you look at last season, obviously, in the boys, we had four divisions. Um, we had the bull, we had the um, we had the gold, the blue, the white, and the red. So now we got three divisions, considering obviously you're playing a 22 game schedule. You're playing a, um, and you're playing a, um, you know, and you're playing, I mean, you're playing 22 games. You're guaranteed 23 if you include the district. Um, some teams really don't have their schedules fully completed yet. Um, so I expect them to have that heading into the season. So, you know, especially when you look at in the boys side of things, you know, that can be a little bit more difficult. I know certain teams usually don't have 23 games. I mean, other teams will like to play. A lot of showcase games. I know especially North Farmington and Ferndale are going to be playing in some showcase games this year. A lot of that. Um, North Farms are taking the west side of the state. Um, Ferndale, we know they like to play. Um, we know they like to play some showcase games as well. I mean, they do have them. Um, obviously, last year with Ferndale winning the Division Two state championship. Um, you know, Adams having that run last year, getting to the um, quarterfinals. Um beating Clarkson three times in one year. I mean, that says something right there. Um, but let's look at the division here. Let's look at the blue first. I mean, obviously, when you look at this division this year, there's a lot of storylines when you look at this division. Um, Avenel obviously having a new coach in Jared Thomas. Um, um, obviously, um, that's going to be a storyline. Oxford, of course, and a new coach in Joe Fed- Short. Um, Frederick. Um, I think um, when you – and then, of course, you look at um, – you know, so two new coaches are in this um, division. So, you know, so that's going to be really interesting to see how this division is going to look. I mean, early favorite right now, I would have to say, honestly, would be, um, I think it's going to be a three-team race early on, but this could all change. I mean, obviously, you got, you got, um, you know, obviously, Avondale, you know, got Oxford, obviously, and then you have Stony Creek. I mean, Stony Creek last season, you know, I was just, you know, and I'm, when you look at the Cougars this year, I mean, people have said to me about Stony Creek is, you know, when Coach Jeff Owen took over, um, you know, obviously, you know, the pedigree he had at Warren Mott. Um, he turned that program around, but, I mean, he turned that program around. Um, a lot of people look at that hire and say, like, well, okay. I mean, it was a, it's an interesting hire. I mean, obviously, you know, you have a very good assistant coach at Kenny Goings, um, former Michigan State great. Um, but when I look at, Stony Creek, you know, last season, it was really rough. I mean, I didn't, I thought, honestly, because I had Stony Creek win the division last year. I had them winning the blue last year. And for them to get out to a really rough start um, with that experience, it, it said a lot um, when you look at the Cougars. And I think there were some, seri- there were some serious question marks um, with Stony Creek, I mean, coming into the year last year and then they they had some good wins i mean they beat Ro- I mean, beat royal oak which was huge um they were in it with romeo i mean i'll tell you what they battled in that district in that district in the first round against romeo last year where i'll tell you what i mean like i thought you know in that game with stony creek there were times that i felt like they were the better team and you know 
and they just, you know, they just, it's just one play didn't go their way. And, you know, and you look at what happened, um, credit where credit's due. I mean, like Stony Creek, um, you look at the Cougars, their program strength is really good this year. I think for program strength is going to be, it's going to be one of the most unique. And obviously when you look at Stony Creek, um, I expect them to be one of the favorites this year. And as he's talking to coach Jeff Owen, um, he thinks the same way, you know what I mean, heading into the year. I got the coach of the Creek, Coach Jeff Owen here. Coach, um, last season was rough. I mean, like, so how's the off season been for you guys? Obviously with that young, uh, with your program strength, your JV program, your freshman program, really good last year. So talk about how the off season's been for you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's always a transition and change with a new, uh, new coach, new program and everything. And, uh, yeah, now these guys have been at it for a couple years. Uh, like you said, our lower levels were very successful, and uh, and we've been coming out working hard all summer, all fall, and uh, you know we're excited to, to put this together and see what happens. Talk about Trey. Obviously, of course, some Trey. Um, is like your point guard, obviously. So how's he been doing this off season? You know, he's been working out his game. He's our leading scorer, leading assist man last year. Uh, he continues to get better. His shots looking better. His pull up game's gotten better. You know, his ball handling's always been solid. And uh, you know, now he's got to focus on those other intangibles, uh, getting the other guys on the team better, and uh, you know, being that leader that we really need him to be as a team. What is your expectations here, Coach? Uh, we can be as good as our as our senior leaders take us. Um, I, you know, the way the division is this year, as, as bad as our record was last year, we were competitive with pretty much everybody in the league. And uh, I really feel as though it's, it's going to be the little things that can make a difference this year. And, you know, second year in, these guys know how things are supposed to go. And so hopefully get some guys step up, be some leaders, do some players, do some coaching out there. And uh, that's going to be pretty successful. Thank you really much, Coach. Of course, when you look at Stony Creek this season, um, obviously the second year of a program, you know, you always got to take that next step. And I'm curious to see how this program is going to look. You know, Stony Creek last season had 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 rough. I mean, it was rough. I mean, you look at, of course, the players that got back, obviously Trey Walker, Tomasco Sincola, Jonah McKay's coming back. Um, so I think Stony Creek right now, if I had to pick a team right now that, you know, I think could do some damage is Stony Creek. Now, although there are some challengers in this division, I mean, obviously you look at, you look at, of course, a team like Avondale um, with, Everything they went through this last off season was just it was rough. I mean, Pat Clancy stepped down, they had an interim coach come in, um, and then Jared Thomas, of course, former assistant under um, you know, a former assistant under Coach Tim Morton, he took over the program, and you know, we know what um, you know, Thomas's track record is. Um, look what he did at Rochester Adams. I mean, you look at what he did with that program. Obviously, that program was in really rough straits under Brad Crichton, um, program strength was down. Um, he rebuilt that program and he turned Adams into a, into a powerhouse. I mean, he turned that program into a powerhouse, leading them their first regional championship. Um, and then getting to the state quarterfinals where they fell the grand blank. Um, when you look at Avondale this year, there are some similarities, but also there are some differences when you look at, um, Avondale and obviously when I look at Avondale this year um I think there's a lot of expectation now for Avondale and obviously that's got a coach like coach Jared Thomas really excited so here he is for me today at the um and me catching up with him in an interview with him coach of the Jackets coach Jared Thomas coach um first year at Avondale um how's the transition period been for you uh it's been uh man I say it's been a grind We've been in the gym since May 1st, uh, working hard. Um, a lot of season workouts we've had guys invest in showing up. Summer league was uh, productive, and now we're approaching the season pretty healthy and see what we can do. Talk about, of course, the um, the um, being in the being in the new division, the new challenge. Very similar to Adams. He told me about this, um, obviously. So how is the how is that transition from Avondale going from when you were at Adams? Yeah. Uh, I think it's completely different in the sense of here. Um, I feel we do have uh, we do have some established upperclassmen. We do have some juniors. Um, I think we 
just have one or two seniors, but I do feel we have a good core of players, um, which I didn't have that initially at Adams. So I'm hoping, um, yeah, we can just do the little things and, and show up and be the best we can be. What are the expectations here, Coach? Oh, man. Uh, I want to get to the season, and I want to feel like um, we gave it our all. I want to feel like we were the hardest playing team, most connected team, and we improved the most from start to finish. Thank you really much, Coach. Avondale is going to be really interesting to watch. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Jackets, um, this is a team that could do some damage this year. Um, obviously, you do return Justin Gers Sykes. Um, you got, um, I'm really high on him this year. They got other proven returners as well. I mean, Avondale's got a chance to be a really good team this year. I mean, they do. So, we'll see what happens with them. Um, I think they're another contender in this division. Another one to watch for is Oxford. Of course, when you look at the Wildcats this year, um, a change in coaches. Of course, Steve Blade lost step down. Um, now his assistant is JV coach, um, Joe Fachorek. He enters the, um, or Coach Fed, a lot of people call him at Oxford, steps in, takes over that program. Now, when you look at Oxford, obviously, they did lose Dominic Cassisi. He is now at Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, Jake Champagne, actually, is the um, their top player, actually, for Oxford. Of course, Champagne um, has had a big offseason, um, playing really well for had playing really well for Oxford. They have both Katie brothers, obviously Joe and um Joe and Jay. I mean, like obviously both Katie brothers are gonna have in line to have big years in the post. I mean, Luke Stofan's another one to really watch for. So when I look at Oxford this year, um, the question for me with Oxford is gonna always be size. So when you look at the cats this year, um a lot to be excited about for Oxford, especially with Champagne, but you know, when you look at Champagne, you compare him to, like, to Trey Townsend. Obviously, of course, Trey Townsend now at Oakland um, playing for legendary coach Greg Campy. Um, now you look at with Champagne, you know, carrying the load. I mean, like, the only question I have for Oxford coming in the year is secondary scoring. So when I talk to Coach Fed about this, I mean, like, I'm very curious to see how, how, uh, how he's going to make this work this year over at Oxford. So here's Coach Fed at media day. Coach of the Cats, Coach Fed here. Coach, um, how's the transition period been for you coming into the year? Oh man, it's been pretty smooth. Uh, I've been uh, blessed to have the uh, the group of kids that I had, um, and kids who haven't been playing fall sports. But they've been in the gym working, um, working on their game and, and getting better. It's been a, I think it's been a very successful off season for us uh, this year. A lot of work, but I uh, can't wait to get going on Monday. Talk about, obviously, Jake, and then, of course, it's like a vintage Batman-Robin over at Oxford with Jake playing the role of Batman. Anybody in playing the role of Robin this year? Oh, yeah, I mean, everyone knows about Jake. Um, he's averaged, I think he averaged 18 points a game last year. Mm -hmm. um, he had a strong travel season with the Wolfpack. Mm -hmm. um, he can score at all three levels, shoots it well, jump mid-range games is very good, finish at the bucket. Uh, mm -hmm. I really look forward to seeing what Luke Stoffing is going to be doing for us this year. Um, I will constantly be asking him to be more aggressive. Um, he is a returning uh, point mm -hmm. guard for us. He's a junior, and I look big things out of him. He can shoot the ball. He can get to the bucket. Uh, he's the catalyst. He's going to be the catalyst of our team. He's kind of the, the you know the straw that really gets us going. Um, and I, I will constantly... Uh, be telling him to be more aggressive uh, this season. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Well, I think with I'm not inheriting a, a uh, program with that's with the cupboards that are bare. Um, anytime you can return, uh, you can get a job, and you got two kids like Jake and Luke. You know they're going to give you a chance to win games. Um, so my expectation, we're going to compete hard uh, in this OA Blue. I'd like to think that we got a heck of a chance of winning it, um, but we got to go out there and earn it. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. So when you look at Oxford this year, people are going to say, of course, it's going to be, it's a, it's a batman Robin show. I mean, the question is going to be who's going to be the Robin. Is it going to be one of the Katie brothers? Is it going to be Stolfin? I mean, there's a lot of questions for Coach Fed's team, obviously. Um, when you look at... Um, when you look at um, a team like um, like um, Oxford this year. So, a lot to like when you look at the Wildcats this year. Um, but they're going to need to find um, 
find a Robin. If they can find a Robin to Champagne's Batman, I think this team could be could go places. I mean, they're a sleeper in the um division this year. I mean, they got a tough schedule, obviously, but then their district when they get to postseason play is absolutely brutal because you got in their district they got Davison, Grand Blank, both those teams. Um, obviously Grand Blank we know has got a new coach this year. Um, Davison we know has been really good up and coming, obviously. Um, and then you're in it. You have Lapierre in there. You got Holly. I think Holly's been really, really been impressive under Coach D. Dayhart. Um, they got some really good players coming back as well. Of course, some Tony Simmons um, is been is is solid inside. They got a really good guard as well. Um, so it's going to be a tough district for Oxford um, in when they get the postseason. So, you know, obviously winning the blue would be very important for this team um, to possibly maybe try to get seated. Um, maybe because you're going to have to eventually see Davison or Grand Blank, but also Holly is your dark horse in that district. So, you know, so it'll be a tough postseason for Oxford. Um, I expect Oxford to be solid this year. Um, contend likely in this division, obviously. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what Oxford's got, um, this upcoming season. So a lot to look at with Oxford. Um, let's now look at the Berkeley Bears. I mean, obviously last year. Um, for them, they lost to me in Um, that is a big loss for them. And, you know, I'm curious to see who takes over the roles of scoring. Um, who's going to take over that, who's going to take over that offensive juggernaut. I know when I'm talking to coach Joe Sermo, um, I have his quotes in the blog at second of my at blogspot.com. Um, so when you look at Berkeley, they've got some options, but some questions too. I mean, like obviously... How are you going to replace the production, Rukovich? How are you going to replace program strength? There's a lot of questions when you look at Berkeley um, coming into the season. I mean, a lot of questions. So when you look at the Bears, um, just a lot of lot of lot of questions. I mean, when you look at when you look at Berkeley this year, just a ton of them. So that's something I'm keeping an eye on this year with Berkeley. I know they have. Um, it's an interesting non-conference for them. I know Coach Sermo really likes program strengths. So that's something to really watch for this year for um for um Berkeley. And I think they're gonna be in. I think they can have a very good year. I mean, I, I think they have a good chance to do very well. I think they got a great chance to really succeed. I mean, like this year, they're a dark horse team to watch. And I think that's something to really, really watch for um heading into this season. Um, let's go now from Berkeley to Arch Rival Royal Oak. Um when you look at the Ravens, um, the Ravens are a solid team. This is a really good team. Last season, 2022, um, they were really good. I mean, Dylan Hoffman played great. You had his brother, Nick Hoffman, played great. I mean, Candy Clark. I mean, they had, I mean, they had Rashad Wilson. He had a nice year. I mean, and then when they got to 2023, everything just went south. And... You know, when you look at for Coach Aaron Smith, I, I don't know if it's the schedule they played, the non-conference schedule they played. I mean, it was totally different. From, it was pre-Lake Orion to the, to after Lake Orion. Royal Oak was not the same team after that Lake Orion game, and they really struggled. I mean, they were 500 in league play last year. Um, lost to a um, lost to, to Detroit Renaissance in the um, district. Um, now you look at the district this year. With Royal Oak, I mean, now they don't have Detroit Renaissance or um or UD Jesuit in their district, and they got a competitive district now. Obviously, when you look at Royal Oak this year for Coach Aaron Smith, um, you got Camden Clark back, you have Nick Hoffman back, but it's going to be really hard for them to replace the production. Even I mean, for their all-time leading scorer and Dylan Hoffman, I mean, it's going to be a difficult, difficult task ahead of them. I mean, obviously. When you look at the Ravens, um, program strength is okay. Um, I think, you know, that'll be something to really watch for is program strength. I know they got some solid bigs in the program. Um, I'm more curious to see the sub varsity levels with Royal Oak. Um, you know, and obviously it's not an easy thing to replace um, replace a player like, um, like a Dylan Hoffman. It's going to be challenging for them. And... You know, and obviously, I think for Royal Oak this year, I think they're going to surprise. They could surprise some people, but they're going to need production from Clark. They're going to need production from Hoffman. If they can bring production, 
I think Royal Oak could be a really day, real, uh, could be a sleeper in this division. So, you know, so a lot to look at with Royal Oak. Obviously, um, I think you know they they they're a team to watch. I think they're going to be. It's going to depend on how the schedule goes, how everything's going to look at with them. So that's something to really really watch for um, with the Ravens this season. Um, next, let's go from Royal Oak to Pontiac. Of course, Pontiac has a new coach in Andrew Myers. Myers was an assistant last year. Um, under Coach Damon O'Neill at Pontiac. Um, they got some key players coming back. That's a big deal for Pontiac. Um, last year, it was a rough year for them. They only won three games. Um, so there's a lot to be, you know, a lot, you know what I mean? They And obviously, with Andrew Myers, he's done a really good job in the summer leading the program. Um, now comes the interesting part. I mean, like, can, Pontiac, can Myers bring Pontiac back to when they were in their glory days when they were at Pontiac North and Pontiac Central, I remember that rivalry. And then, of course, the early years of that. And then also, of course, under Joel Schroeder, um, when um, he led the Phoenix to a 19-2 um, and two season, um, to a regional final appearance. I mean, like, so it'll be really interesting to see how, um, you know, how the Phoenix do this year. I mean, like, obviously with Coach Andrew Myers there, um, they got some young talent there. Um, they are looking forward to turning the corner, and I think they have a shot to do that this year. So Pontiac, you know, I'm curious to see what the Phoenix have. Um, couldn't they surprise some people? Sure. I know the gym at Side Green Gym is going to open up soon. Um, I think they're going to, you know, cause I know they had a renovation because they played a lot of their games last year at Pontiac Kennedy. Um, so, you know, you look at the Phoenix, I mean, like, new program, new, um, you know, new direction. Um, curious to see where Pontiac goes this season. So, a lot to look at with Pontiac um, this season. Um, let's go now from Pontiac to Rochester. I mean, when you look at the Falcons this year, last year was a rough year. I mean, yeah, they were very young. I mean, I mean, yeah, they had some good players. I mean, they had Kamani Posit, Andrew Cagano, um, just some really good talent, really good players on that team. But, you know, they, they had some struggles. I mean, you know, when you look at the record 5-18, and 2-10, I mean, you look at it to struggle. I mean, they were in a lot of close games. I mean, don't get me wrong here. I mean, they had some good wins, obviously, last season, but it was rough for Rochester. I mean, they did find some breakout players. I mean, Jake Tandy really broke out. Max Moll, um, as a freshman last year, he had a nice year for Rochester. Um, now he's in his sophomore year. Tandy, I think, is due for a big year. I mean, I'm really excited to see how Logan Pleasant does for Coach um, Nick Ebola. Um, I think Rochester, I, there's a team in this division I think can make a real big jump in this division that could be a sleeper. It's Rochester because of who they got back, um, who they've got. I mean, like, the schedule's interesting for them. They play a heavy OA schedule, which is going to be interesting to see. Um, but when you look at players like Max Mall, Jake Tandy, Logan Pleasant, those are three pieces to work with. Um, and I think could get Rochester back in the thick of it. Could they be a sleeper in the blue? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think they can give Oxford problems. I think they can give Stony problems. They can give Avenel problems. I think, you know, they could be a team that be might be in that conversation. I mean, like, who knows? But Rochester, a lot of excitement for them. And I think Rochester could be a dark horse candidate this upcoming season. So a lot to look at with Rochester. A lot of excitement for them. Um, just, I think Rochester could be a really good team this season. I really do. So, something to really watch for this year. Program strength has been, has been strong for them. I mean, like, so it'll be something to really watch for this season for Rochester. Um, but I think with, behind the play of Max Mall, Logan Pleasant, Jake Tandy, um, you know, I think those three alone, I think could get, you know, are going to be a solid foundation for years to come for Coach Ebola. Um, leading that program over there at Rochester. So now let's go from Rochester to Ferndale University. Um, the Eagles had a, had, had a good year last year. I mean, 11 wins, that says a lot. Um, but winning two, going two and six in the division was not, it was a rough. I mean, obviously when you look at the Eagles this year, they're going to be a lot younger. I mean, like you look at, of course, a lot younger. So so when I talked to Coach um, Josh Nix, I mean, like obviously – Talking to, about the Eagles and the expectations of, you know, putting the program in, getting the program strength in, and everything like that. So I caught up with Coach Nix talking about the Eagles. 
I got the coach, the Ferndale University coach, Josh Nix here. Of course, I'm coach. Last season, you guys lost a lot of experience last year. So talk about how the off season has been for you. Off season has been a learning experience for sure. A lot of young guys come in. Um, we lost 11 seniors last year. I'm returning one varsity basketball player from last season. Um, so just bringing in a new young group of kids has been fun. Um, summer league was a rough start. We were working between some kids trying to transfer and not come in and just trying to jail certain kids. And it didn't work out, but uh, just sticking to my core, I think that was one of the bigger things going into my third season was kind of just keeping this young group and seeing how much I can grow as a coach and seeing how well we can grow and develop as my coaching staff, how, we, how well we can develop those young players. Um, fall was really great for us. Um, got to jail a lot more as uh, as a team chemistry wise coaches to player chemistry and player to player chemistry has grown a lot so i'm excited for the season i think we have a, we can finally have the defensive image that i want to have that i've been wanting to have for the last two years we had the talent and pieces to do it last the last two years but i think this team that we have coming up has embodies everything i want to have defensively it's really scrappy really gritty and they love to uh, press so that i'm excited for the season actually what is your expectation this year coach expectation this year shockingly with losing as much talent as we did had I, I plan to win about 15 games this year um, I'm excited to be in the OAA blue uh, definitely excited to go out to play to schools like Rochester and Stony Creek just seeing some new facilities this year um, we have a super small facility I don't know if anybody's been out there but so just taking the kids out to see some bigger facilities some nicer facilities and just playing some different faces and getting to know different coaches and playing styles of basketball so I think we're gonna I honestly think with the talent um, I don't think we're as talented skillfully as we were last year, but this team jails way more than they did than the last the team for the last two years, um, and they listen a lot more. So that's so much easier for me to coach. Mm -hmm. It makes it just makes it fun. So I think we'll we'll be we will be better this year. Thank you really much, coach. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. So when you look at the Eagles, I mean, like a lot to be excited for for Fernando University. Um, young team. Uh, I mean, I think they're going to be a little bit more disciplined this year. Um, they could surprise some people. I mean, like, I think the university's got a great chance to really surprise, make some noise, and I think they got a great chance to do that. So when you look at Fernand University, I mean, like, you know, if you go down there to their gym, yeah, it's small. I mean, it is really small. I mean, like, but, you know, they like the, they use the court to their advantage. They, I mean, they, I mean, like, you know, it's like a home-like atmosphere for Fernand University. So, you know, for Coach Nix, I mean, a lot of excitement for the Eagles coming up. So, a lot to look at um, when you look at Fernand University. Um, when you look at the Blue Division this year, obviously, it is a big division. There is eight teams in this division. Um, and I think there's a lot to be excited for. Um, you know, obviously, Stony Creek right now, I would have to say, is the early favorite. Um, Avondale and Oxford are going to be right there. Rochester's a sleeper. Berkeley, Royal Oak, I mean, they lost a lot of talent. Um both teams, obviously, both Berkeley and Royal Oak lose their star players. Um, Berkeley with Tamir Rukovic, Royal Oak with Dylan Hoffman. Um, and then Fernand University lost a lot of experience. And then for Pontiac, you know, new coach, new system, new culture. So, you know, so when you look at, when you look at this division, it could be any way. I mean, it could be, it could be a really, I think it could be a really interesting division. I think it's a wide open division, honestly. So that's my take on the blue here. Um, you know, obviously, it's going to be wide open. It's going to be a fun division to watch this year, um, that division for sure. Um, let's go now from the blue division to the white this year. Um, again, there is eight teams in this division. Um, you look at, of course, this division last year. Um, of course, Groves West Bloomfield won the division, um, shared the um, white. Now they're in the red. Um, so you got to look at, of course, who is your next favorite? It's the Troy Colts. I mean, you look at Troy. Um, Obviously, with the Colts, you do return three very good players. Um, Chase Kuyper, um, you got um, Johnny Whiteside, and then, of course, Mason Parker. So, Mason Parker, you know, I've, I've heard a lot. He's had a great offseason. Um, Troy could be a dangerous, dangerous team this year. Um, and when you look at legendary coach Gary Fralick and talking to him, um, there's a lot of good things when you look at Troy this year. I mean, they got defense, they're scrappy, you got proven shooting, um, you got guard play, you got depth, I mean, like, there's a lot to like with Troy, and when you look at the Colts, um, you know, they don't, you know, they, I mean, like, I mean, like, when you look at the Colts, I mean, they could be a scary team this year, 
I mean, you look at, of course, obviously with Coach Fralick there, um, but also with Mason Parker there, they have the makings of having a deep postseason run. Now, the challenge for them is going to be, I don't think it's going to be in the league, where I think it's going to be more in the postseason, where they got to deal with Birmingham Brother Rice. So, that's going to be really interesting to see how Troy matches up with them once they get in the future. So, I caught up with Coach Fralick to talk about the Colts heading into the year. I got the legendary coach of the Colts, Gary Fralick here. Coach, um, last year you had a nice year. You won a district championship. Um, how how did how did the experience win the district title last year? Helping, I mean, helping heading into this year. Well, anything, anytime you win a championship the year before, it carries over in a positive manner, and uh, last year's no exception. It, it, we have we have enough starting players, enough backup players that played a good amount, good amount last year. Will really be, I think, even better this year. And so. I, I think I think there's a lot to be said that we will we will have a chance to carry things over into the, the type of team that we'd like to be. Talk about your district this year. You got Brother Ice in your district this year. So when you look at when you looked at it back in June, what was your initial thought process? Well, obviously I am not extremely happy that Brother Rice is in our district, but I realize that they are, and I think we. I think we'll be ready for them. We will scout them thoroughly. We'll have them at Troy Athens if if we get you know if we don't get upset in the first round. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can beat them, and then if we beat them, then we go to uh, back to Troy for our region. Mm -hmm. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Well, I'd like to win a, a league, a district. And a regional, and then go from there. We'll see what we can get after that. Thank you really much, Coach. Okay, buddy. Of course, that was Co uh, Troy Coach Gary Fralick here, obviously talking about the Colts this year. Um, like he said, a lot to be excited about. Obviously, having to go through Brother Rice, that's going to be a challenge for um, the Colts this year. But feels confident they can get it done. Obviously, when you return three proven, experienced talents like um, Parker, like Whiteside, and Kuiper, you know that's going to be very, very helpful for your for your cause. So, and obviously, you know, Birmingham Brother Rice has been mentioned as one of the top teams in the state this year. Uh, last year, they were ranked number one in the state, but or but lost to Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the district final. Um, so you know, and then the um, so we'll go over that obviously in a little bit with districts. Um, obviously, the districts are on the blog at Saginaw by forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. If you want to take a look at the districts, um, but with Troy this year, a lot of excitement for them. A lot of expectations for them. I think the Colts could have a really nice year. Um, another team to watch for this year is Harper Woods. I mean, when you look at the Pioneers this year, um, you know, for Coach um, Tawan Porter, you got a lot of experience back. You look at especially football players. Um, you got a lot of proven talent on that team as well. I mean, like Harper Woods has a boatload of senior experience who've been battle-tested, uh, went to the... Um, they went to the district final last year, um, losing to a really good Girls Point South team. Um, I think when you look at the Pioneers um, this year, I think they're going to be better this year because of that senior experience. And I think that's going to be a big factor. Um, I think the I think with Harper Woods, um, you know, obviously for Coach Tuan Porter, he's toughing up the schedule, but there's some games he like to get some get some in there for him. I think Harper Woods has a chance to be really good. Um, the question for me is going to be is, you know, obviously they're going to be they're going to have some depth. They're going to have how are the kids going to be, especially those who are playing football right now, um, who just came off the division of four state finals, um, like um Kobe Taylor and a um, you know, of course um Ramity House and then of course Stephon Buford. Um, who played bat? Who also played basketball? Who also played football? So really curious to see how those players interact um, to go with the experience. Of course, led by of course by Julian Young, who I think could be in for a monster year this year um, over at Harper Woods. So you know Harper Woods program strength is solid. Um, I'm very curious to see how year three goes for Harper Woods. I mean, like you know, obviously they got they got an idea of what Porter wants and. I think Harper Woods could be in for a nice year. I mean, their district looks favorable. Um, being in being in Division Two, 
Um, they do have the O'Chandler Park Academy. That's going to be really interesting to see. Um, I know they got St. Clair Swords Lakeshore in that district, so that'll be another team to watch. So we'll see what happens. I mean, like, but I think Harper Woods could be in line for a big year, and playing in the white is going to certainly help them. I mean, like, that'll certainly help them a lot this season in that division. Um, then let's look at Troy Athens. Obviously, when you look at the Red Hawks, this is a team that lost a lot of ex some experience last year, but they do got some experience coming back. I mean, we look at Emmanuel Robinson, Luke Giovanni. Um, you got um, of course you got um, you got others as well for Coach Dave Scott. Um, I really think with Troy Athens this year, they could surprise some people this year. So when I talked to Coach Dave Scott about the Red Hawks, I mean, like he was really, really excited about looking at the looking at the outcome for the Red Hawks this season. Coach of the Hawks, Coach Jim Dave Scott here. Um, Coach, obviously, I want to talk about the new redesign logo at Troy Athens, of course. One of the best logos I've seen in almost 10 years. So talk about talk about how everything's been doing this offseason for you guys. Yeah, everything's been great. We're excited. You know, we have a new athletic coordinator. Uh, you know, we're getting some fresh ideas. We love the new logo. Um, yeah, but more importantly, we're looking forward to the season. Uh, we've got a nice group of kids uh, we're moving up in the white division. Uh, we're excited to play teams like Lake Orion twice a year, Troy twice a year, uh, Bloomfield Hills twice a year. Uh, you know, I think our league is going to be very competitive. Uh, and we're just excited to get, get started. Talk about, obviously, the talk about your district. I mean, it is brutal. I mean, you got Troy in there, you got Brother Rice in there. I mean, like, you're just, you're just laughing right now. So talk about that. You know, it's uh, the state in its uh, infinite wisdom has, uh, you know, assigned districts in a geographical manner. And you host it. And, and we're hosting, so it's nice that we're going to see, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that we're going to see some teams, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from Bluefield and Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, you know, out there in Troy. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, you know, I think we're going to have one of the better districts in the state, but, you know, between Troy and Brother Rice and Seaholm and Bluefield and us, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. What is your expectation this year? I think we're just going to show up. We're going to compete, play hard every night. That's you know kind of what we what we try and do. So you know we'll, we'll do that and we'll see what happens. Thank you really much, Coach. Good to see you, buddy. Look at the Red Hawks this year, and I think this is going to be interesting. I mean, Athens. I think they're going to be solid. I think they're going to be very good this year. I mean, you know, I mean, like, do I? I mean, do I expect them? You know, I think they're a sleeper in the M um, White this year. There's a lot of other teams in that division that are sleepers as well. Um, but when you look at Troy Athens this year, I mean, they're a scrappy team, very good defensively. I mean, they are a, I mean, Coach Dave Scott has done a really nice job of that program. So a lot of excitement for Troy Athens this year. I think they're going to be a team to really watch for in that division this year. Next, we have the Birmingham Seahole Maples. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Maples, um, you think about defense, you think about what Coach Mike DeGeter has done. Um, with that program, you think about the depth that T-Home's going to have this year. They return a very good player in Friendly Sparby. They got others as well who I'm really excited to see about with T-Home. They're a scrappy team. I mean, you look at T-Home, they, they talked at media day about their depth, obviously going 11 deep. You know, if you're a team that goes 11 deep this year, that is scary because that tells me you have a lot of depth. That tells me your program strength's good. That tells me a lot. And I think Seahome, to me, this year could be a very scary team when you look at depth and when you look at, of course, the quality of players they have. I mean, they are they have a lot of players that are scrappy. I mean, so that's something to really, really watch for when you look at Seahome this year. So a lot to look at with the Maples, and I think they're a team that could really, really surprise some people this year. I think they're a very, very scrappy team this year this season. So Seahome, a lot of excitement with them. I mean, like, so it'll be something to really watch for with them this season. And then we have Lake Orion. Um, obviously Coach Jose Andradas, um, they lost DJ Morrow. You lose Blake Lydell. Uh, Kevin Tobe, that's going to be tough to, tough to overcome. But when you look at players like Ryan Rusho, who's ready to take over, you got Quay Fly. You have, um, you also have, um, of course, they do have a transfer coming in there, and Zach Parks came over from Brandon. Um, you know, you have Hayden Armstrong, Sam Blakely back. Um, Lake Orion, I mean, a lot of people look at the Dragons and say, okay, um, you know, what does Lake Orion have? They don't have that true star 
they don't have that. You know, obviously, we look at players like Alden Ritt. Um, you look at, of course, um, DJ Morrow. They don't have that star player that could go to that you go to to win games. I mean, obviously, your best player looks to be Ryan Russell. So, but they do have some playmakers. I mean, like you, some young, 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 talented playmakers. I think they can make some noise. Um, so when you look at the Dragons, they could be a team to watch this year. Um, they're a young group, had a good summer. Um, you know, they, they had a really good summer, but this team's a very young team. So, you know, when you look at Lake Orion, um, they are the great unknown. And I think they could, they could be, you know, they could surprise some people this year. And I think the Dragons could be a team to really, really watch for, um, their program strengths on the rise. Um, you look at, of course, their freshman and sophomore classes are both very good. Um, you know, so when you look at Lake Orion this year, I mean, they, I mean, like, I mean, people don't expect much from them this year, but they, who knows? I mean, Lake Orion, they could be a team to really, really watch for this season. So they're a team to really watch for sure coming into the year. Um, next, we'll go to Blue Hills. I mean, when you look at the Blackhawks, obviously losing Noah Adam Chich, it's a big loss. Um, when you look at the Blackhawks, um, when you talk to, um, when you talk to, um, you know, the Blackhawks this year, I mean, like, um, obviously there is a lot of expectation this year. I mean, they did lose some key players. When you lose Noah Adam Chich, that's going to be a challenge. Um, so I caught up with Bloopy Hills, um, talking about, talking about the um, state of the Blackhawks. I got the coach of the Hawks, coach Brian Canfield here, coach, um, Last season, you had a good year, a great year, but you lost a couple of key players. You lost Noah, you lost um, a lot of senior, lot of senior right, experience. Yeah. So talk you know, about how that is. You know, so new, new challenge for us this year. I think that over the last however many years, throughout the course of that time, there's always been some key players returning. And this year, we kind of have a blank slate and an opportunity, a great challenge, a great opportunity to try to leave our mark again with some new players who can leave an impact. I'm, I'm really excited about that. We have some, some outstanding young men with high, high character. They take care of their business in the classroom and they're super hard workers, very coachable. So myself and the coaching staff are really excited about that. Talk about your district. I mean, your district is going to be very interesting this year. What's your initial thoughts when you had that district come out? I mean, here's the thing is that the, our, our conference, the OA White is tough conference alone, and so we really like playing in a conference where you got to battle every night, and we feel like that helps prepare us for the postseason. And we know we know that we have a tough district, but um, you know it's just one of those things, taking it one day at a time, and you get your team in a different place at the end of the year than they are at the beginning of the year. What's your expectation this year, Coach? Yeah, so our expectation is that. We want to really develop our players as uh, time goes on. We know that there's a learning curve with our players this year, but um, we're super excited to get in and just reteach from from kind of step one and have our players just take off. And our, our goal this year is to really expedite the growth of our players. And uh, we feel like even though we lost our, a lot of guys, we lost five starters and key players off the bench, we, we feel like we can come in, we can play with teams in the OA White. And so, uh, so our goal is to be right there in the mix of it again. Thank you really much, Coach. All right. All right. Of course, it's Coach Brian Canfield here. Obviously, when you look at the Blackhawks this year, um, you know, he said it best. I mean, like, you know, try and expedite the process, obviously. Um, you know, you look at – you they got some experienced players. I mean, like, obviously, they got some hard workers as well. I'm really curious to see how they adapt quickly. You know, can they ad adjust quickly? Um, obviously, that's going to be the challenge for Coach Canfield and his team this year is can they adjust quickly, you know, to life in this division? And I think that's the big question when you look at um, Bloomfield Hills this year is obviously, you know, you don't really have that, you know, go-to guy. I mean, they do got some candidates who could, don't get me wrong, but, I think Blue Bay Hills, I mean, like, you know, it'll. I think it'll take, you know, I mean, it'll take a little bit for them. But I think Blue Bay Hills, you know, went. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to see this team come February and early March, especially in postseason time. Um, they could really challenge some people this upcoming season. So, Blue Bay Hills, a lot to look at this year with them. Curious to see how they do this year for Coach Canfield. And then we look at Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, 
the Warriors, when you look at you look at South Edison Tech, of course, when you look at the Warriors this year, um, they had they had some experience last year, winning ten games, five and three in the gold last year. Um, you look at of course, curious to see how Coach Terrence Porter gets the players who are playing in the Division One state finals into the program. There is a couple of kids who are playing football, um, who played football, um, coming up, coming back into um coming back into playing basketball. Um, so there's a lot of questions, a lot of youth with South Bend Arts and Tech this year. Um, playing a tough schedule, which is really mind-boggling, especially when you have a young team playing a tough schedule. You've got a very tough district ahead of them, you know, that has North Farmington in there. Um, that's also not going to be an easy thing for them as well. So when we look at A&T, curious to see how this program looks. I mean, curious to see how A&T looks this season um, for Coach Terrence Porter. So a lot to look at with A&T. And then there's Farmington, of course. Farmington, we know, um, has had that turbulent offseason. Um, coaching change. Byron Johnson takes over the program. Um, really curious to see how, um, you know, especially play like Greg Graves does this year for Farmington. They got others as well. So when you look at Farmington, um, just a lot of questions coming in for them, um, especially in wake of what's going on. Um, He's been in the news lately. Um, just really curious to see. Obviously, program strength is going to be a concern now for Farmington. Um, so a lot of questions when you look at the Falcons this year. Um, they do have a you have Greg Grace, their top player, coming back. Um, you got um, they got others as well. I mean, like obviously, um, Jordan Turner is another one to keep an eye on. Um, they got others as well. So, but I'm just really curious to see how Farmington does this upcoming season. So. That's my take on the white. Let's go to the red now. Um, when you look at the red, this is going to be a really good division. Um, defending Division two state champions are in here. You got two champs from the white last year. <laughs> you have Adams who's in here. You have Clarkson. You have Oak Park. Um, but when you look at the favorite in this division, it should be North Farmington. Because when you look at the Raiders, um, there is a lot of question marks with them. They do return some key players. They got... Tyler Spratt, you got Landon Williams. They do have some transfers that came in there. Um, big time transfers that came in there. So I talked to Coach Todd Negotian um, about the Raiders coming into the year. And I know and I know when I read the packet, he said they were fourth. And I'm going like, really? So here's my take with the um, coach of the Raiders, Coach Todd Negotian. The Raiders, Coach Todd Negotian here. Coach, um... You look at last. You look at last season. Of course, that controversial game against St. Mary's. Um, you know, of course. Um, how how has the off season been for you? First, it's, it's been a good off season for us. You know, we got Landon and Tyler back. They did a great job leading a lot of our younger guys this summer. Um, did a great job with them in the weight room um, and in the gym with skill work. So it's been a, it's been a good year for us. We're pretty happy with the way you know summer and the fall went. And now we're just kind of looking forward to the next step to trying to figure out. Um, some roster spots to see where we're going to be and get some younger guys some minutes. Talk about your schedule. I mean, it is brutal when you look at it. Of course, you get to go up and play in some um, invitational. So talk about how that is going for you, how your schedule is looking. It's, uh, it's going to be a bear. I mean, it's, uh, it is what it is every year. I mean, I'm still a firm believer that uh, the Catholic League and the OAA Red are the two top divisions in the state. And, uh, so we got the gauntlet with them. Add West Bloomfield and Grove will be fun. But it, uh, and then, I mean, we all make the state tournament, so we got to use our days to get us ready for that. And, uh, we're just going to try and be ready by the end of February, early March, and uh, use what we can to take advantage of getting better. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Be good in February. That's our only expectation right now. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. So that was Coach Todd Negotian, North Farmington coach. Obviously, you know, being good in February, that's going to be the most important key for a lot of these teams because you have the state tournament coming in March. And I do agree with them. Um, I think North for North Farmington this year, it is about February. And I think that is going to be one of the most really interesting dynamics heading into February is, you know, obviously North Farmington, obviously you know is going to be one of the favorites of the Red this year. Um, they got a lot of proven talent, a lot of depth. Program strength has been really good for Coach Todd Negotian. Um, a lot of excitement when you look at the Raiders coming up this season. Um, next, we have Ferndale um, and um, West Bloomfield. Both teams 
are going to be solid teams this year. West Bloomfield coming up in the white, winning the title, um, winning the white, sharing the white with Groves. Um, also with Ferndale winning a Division II state championship. A lot of excitement for them. So when I talk about the Eagles and the Lakers, both teams are going to be solid teams this year. Coach Annette Jordan, Coach Juan Rickman. Um, so I caught up with both of them to talk about, you know, what their expectations are coming in, having to play each other twice a year, and their district thoughts. The coach of the Division II state champion, um, Coach Juan Rickman, and also West Bloomby coach Arnett Jordan. Of course, both coaches are now going to be red rivals this year. So I'm going to start with um, Coach Arnett first here. Talk about um, how was the move up from the white to the red this year? I was happy to make it. Uh, we'll glad, for it. glad to be back in the red where I think we belong. Um, I think we went down to the white to you know, teach my kids how to win. Now that we won the white, I think it's time for us to go back and get with our normal rivals with North Farmington and Ferndale, and be with a bunch of good players and good coaches. Um, Juan, um, how, how was the experience winning the Division II state championship last year? First time since 1966 that's ever happened at Ferndale. It was cool, man. I appreciate it. It was uh, great to see the community and the guys along the high school. So it was great to see. Um, talk about obviously when you guys look at it here. I know. Um, talk about obviously. I'm gonna go with um, Arnett first. Your district. It, your district's like the kiss of death with St. Mary's in there. Yeah. So talk about that district here for you and your and your eyes. Well, well. I don't know if you know that our district has changed. So now we're with Wall Lake and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. They split our Ooh, district up. Yeah. So we're still following Orchard Lake because it's only a mile down. Mm -hmm. But a chance to play a good team like Orchard Lake, um, that's why we play in the red. Mm -hmm. We're going to build up. We're going to get better. So when it's time to play Orchard Lake, we'll be ready to go. Mm -hmm. Juan, talk about your district. Obviously, um, you're going to be with Warren Lincoln's in there. Um, talk about your, um, your district a little bit. I like it. I just don't like it in that first. Yeah. That's it. I just don't like the location. I know. It's okay. It's okay. We'll be ready. Mm -hmm. What is your expectation this year? I'm going to start with Arnett first and go to Warren. My expectation is for us to play hard, play together, and try to get as many wins. Every night, there's going to be a tough job in front of us and just for us to compete and come out on top of some of those wins and learn something. One same question. Or just to get better as the season progresses. So, we're not really get caught up in the uh, results, but just the process. Thank you really much, Coach. Of course, that was Ferndale coach and Juan Rickman and also um, – and also, in West Movie Coach Arnett Jordan, we talk about um, the previewing here. Obviously, when you look at the Lake, Lakers and the Eagles this year, a lot of excitement for both teams. Fern, Ferndale's got some experience back. Um, Trenton Root is one of those players to really keep an eye on. Um, they also got a um, freshman stand now who could, who's, who has, who's more than capable of, of, of um, having a big monster year for Ferndale. Also, we got... Um, also for West Bloomfield, they got a lot of experience back. And also they had a transfer in Drew Wilson. Um, a lot of key players for West Bloomfield coming back. Um, a lot of excitement for them heading into the year for them. So, you know, you look at Ferndale and West Bloomfield, both teams expected to be really good coming into the year. Um, let's look at Clarkston. Of course, when you look at the Wolves here, um, the Wolves, I think, you know, last year it was a really odd year for them. And... When you look at the Wolves, um, you know, having 10 losses, seven losses in league, you kind of think, what's going on with Clarkston? But they won a district last year, got to the regionals, and now you look at Clarkston, they do got some proven players coming back for Coach Tim Wasilic. Um, John Call is one of them. Matthew Fleiker's another one. Um, I think when you look at Clarkston, you know, they're getting getting closer, but it's more of that worksman like ethic for Clarkston. I think that's gonna be the key for them again this year. They don't really have the talent that um you know that you see from in years past. They're gonna have to win games with the worksman like attitude. Um so I think Clarkston could be a team, they could be a sleeper in this division. So this will be a team to watch for this year. So I expect a lot with Clarkston this upcoming season. So that's something to really, really watch for going forward there. Um, let's go now to Oak Park. I mean, when you look at the Knights here, obviously when you look at Oak Park, um, this team has been like, it's they've been in a team that's been like um, up and down, up and down. And you look at, of course, with the Knights here, 
Um, they got some questions coming in the air. They did lose it. They did lose a player who transferred to North Farmington in Robert Smith. So I caught up with Coach Duran Shepard to talk about the Knights this season. The coach of the Knights, Coach Duran Shepard here. Coach, um, Oak Park last year, you know, had a nice year. Um, what's your thought process coming into the um to this upcoming season? I mean, in the other part, we're just ready to compete like normal. Uh, you know, I don't really get goals on how well we're going to do during our league, but we always going to be competitive. We're going to be up in the higher tier for our results. But at the end of the, day, end of the day, you know, I just expect my guys to play hard and keep improving throughout the year. So at the end of the year, we're going to be a better team than when we start. You know, hopefully these two young men, the leader, Keon Hutchins, who is one of the top players in Michigan. You got Jason Harris. All, both of these guys been three year stars, they're juniors, so I mean I think we're gonna do well. Talk about your um your district. It is brutal. I mean like it, it I mean I think oh well, yeah, Groves in that district. So yeah, we I'm obviously going from Groves from Groves that have been in Detroit, you know what I mean? You know, that's gotta be an advantage for you. Yeah, I think our district will be competitive. I don't know if it'll be worse than last year, you know, having U and D Renaissance. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be competitive. You know, we're just going to be ready to go. You know, at the end of the day, uh, whoever plays us, going to be ready for a fight. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Do well. Uh, compete every night, you know, and at the end of the day, hopefully uh, make a state run, get past the districts, and then the league, hopefully we'll be in the top uh, two or three teams. Thank you really much, Coach. When you look at Oak Park this year, they there's more they're more than capable. I mean, they are more than capable of having that run. But like I said, the question for them is going to be is can they get by that gauntlet? Now it helps them as that district is a little bit not a, a that district's going to help them a little bit. Not seeing UD Jesuit, not seeing Detroit Renaissance um, in that district that should help them. But it but you know Groves is not going to be an easy team. You know Groves is not an easy district. I mean, obviously there's a lot of proven teams in there. Um, you look at Berkeley, Royal Oak, um, I mean, Groves, obviously, and then, of course, um, Warren Mott's in that district as well. So, a lot to look at when you look at that district. Um, let's look at Rochester Adams here, obviously, new coach, and, um, and um, new coach over there. You got a lot of proven experience for, Ad for Adams. So, here is, here is, um, here's Coach Novak, Novak here at the podium here in my interview with him. Rochester Adams, Coach Isaiah Novak here. Coach, um, obviously, how's the transition period been going for you over at Adams? Yeah, it's been fantastic. It's a great support group there, going all the way from administration at the top to the parents uh, to the athletes. Uh, very excited to be a part of it. Talk about your guards, obviously, William and um, Peter. Um, obviously, two guards that have proven experience, have had really good um, careers. Um, talk about how, how blessed you are to coach both those two. Oh, extremely blessed. Uh, I could not be more fortunate coming into the program with as positive of a culture as they have and having uh, two great leaders in Peter and Will. Uh, not only are they fantastic players, uh, but they're great teammates, they're great leaders. Uh, they hold themselves accountable, they hold their teammates accountable. Uh, and being a first year coach, you couldn't ask much more from your, your two leaders. What is your expectation this year, coach? Um, to grind, to play hard, uh, to play like a family, uh, to be resilient. Now, there's no doubt we play in one of the toughest leagues in the state of Michigan. Uh, there's going to be losses throughout the season, uh, but what I'm more looking forward to is how we respond to those losses, uh, and I'm hoping that'll be very similar to the way they did last year. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. Of course, when you look at Adams this year, the word resilience, I've been hearing that a lot all summer. I've been curious to see what this team has. Obviously, you got Peter Kardash, Will G. Curious to see the interior situation over at Adams. I think that's a concern I have with, with them this year. Um, obviously, the shoot, outside shooting is going to be really good for them this year. Um, so it's something to really watch for heading into the year for um, Rochester Adams. And then our last team we're going to look at is the Falcons of Groves. Of course, Groves making the move up from the white to the um, to the red this year. So I caught up with Coach Mark West. Of course, they have a lot of proven experience coming back. But I caught up with Coach West to talk about the um, Falcons this season. Got the coach of Beverly Hills, Wiley Groves here, Coach Mark West here. Coach, last year you shared the white title. Um, you were upset in the first round by Seaholm, so I know it had to be a really rough experience from last year. 
Yeah, I mean, we uh, definitely ended the year with a little bit of a roller coaster. Uh, one of our best wins of the year to win the league championship, and then uh, didn't really bring the same intensity for that that district game. But. Uh, Hopefully that just adds a little bit of the fuel to the fire for this year, uh, gets the guys going. Uh, definitely not gonna take anything for granted anymore. Uh, and, and once we get into that red, we know we're gonna be competing every night. So that part's gonna be a lot of fun. Talk about life in the red. You um, you go up to the red this year, playing against that tough competition. Not to mention your district is here this year at Grove. So talk about that and talk about how life in the red is gonna be. Uh, you know, we're going to learn about that life in the red together. Uh, this is with our first year moving up and seeing what it's all about. Uh, but, I, you know, my expectation is you're going to have to compete at a high level every night. That's what our guys are kind of looking forward to. Um, we've already talked about that, that challenge of every day we got to practice, you know, knowing that, you know, the next team that we play is going to be very, very good. Um, so that no nights off thing is definitely going to be there for us. And then, you know, the idea of getting a district on your home court, that's a big deal. Um, and we're really looking forward to that opportunity and, and uh, you know, hopefully can make some noise there. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Uh, the expectation really is just to compete and get better. Um, if we compete and get better, learn how to compete at that, that red level, uh, we're going to be really happy. So the expectation is to learn as much as we can that first time through the league and then compete at the highest level possible come February and March. Thank you really much, Coach. When you look at Groves this year, I mean, a lot of experience coming back. You have Josh Simpson, John, I mean, like, um, John Simpson, Josh Gibson. Um, I think Groves could be a really, you got Elijah Yelder on that team. Um, Paul Hubbard's another one to watch. So I think Groves could be a sleeper to watch in this division. So, you know, so when you look at the red this year, it's going to be really interesting to see how this division goes. Um, so when you look, that, that is all the, um, that is all for the OA Boys Basketball Divisions. Obviously, the projections, of course, will be on the blog at sagnobay4650blogspot.com. Heading in the outlook for the 2023-2024 um, season. Okay, now, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, good luck to everybody in the boys basketball um, boys basketball this season. Um, stay tuned for the girls basketball um, preview coming up here on the blog.